What's up guys? All right, so check it out. In today's episode, I'm gonna share with you guys exactly what's been going on with these Model S's, X's, even Model 3's and Y's. Now, there's a lot of arguments about the fact that toe is what kills tires and it's not camber. And I really kind of wanted to put that to rest. There's definitely a lot of merit to that argument. I'm not denying that at all, but only to a certain point. So in my experience, my very limited experience, some sarcasm there, um, I have found that up to about a degree and a half or so of camber, you're okay with good toe. Once you start really going above a degree and a half of camber is when you'll start actually seeing some inside shoulder wear. Now, if you have bad toe, it's gonna rip and shred through those tires very fast within like thousands of miles. If you have bad camber with reasonable toe, then it'll take, you know, over 10,000 miles, let's say, for that inside shoulder wear issue to happen or that, that tire separation. So I'm gonna show you this P2 Long Range S just came in and, and he has not aligned it. I wanted to get some baseline numbers on this vehicle before we install his camber correction so you guys can actually see what his alignment readings are and then compare that to what his tires look like when they came in. So let's go look at his tires real quick. All right, so check this out. Look at that, all right? The tire's completely separating right here. You guys can see cord. You can see over here, it's not as bad, but it's definitely uneven. Now the irony is, is that his camber is completely symmetrical. Toe is good, but he still has this problem. So now let's go look at his readings. We have good toe, both sides, but we have negative 1.8 degrees of camber on either side. The front is at zero. So this vehicle is currently in the medium height. Now, if you guys have the vehicle adjusting to low, when you get to higher speeds, like on the freeway, you'll see what's gonna happen. And this is why we suggest people to default to low, to not have the vehicle auto adjust. We're actually gonna put this car in low right now. We're gonna show you what happens to the camber and the tow value so you understand. And then we're gonna show you what happens after we do the camber correction. All right, so there you go. Vehicle is settled at low. We gained about two tenths of a degree of negative camber. The rear towed in slightly. It wasn't much of a tow change actually. And then the front towed out even further. So we're gonna go over here on my little board and we're gonna write down exactly what happened. So we're at minus 0 0.03, minus 0 0.04. This towed out, this towed in. So this is at 0 0.18 and 0 0.18. And then the camera went from minus 1.8 to minus 2.0. So these are the differences. Now, if you have inside tire wear that's related to tow, that's because of tow out. So what happens is the tires go like this. The leading edge is the inside and this just scrubs away, all right? But our biggest issues are in the rear of this car. And as you can see from this chart, the rear is towing in when it compresses or lowers further so that doesn't correlate to inside tire wear. Now what does happen is that you go from minus 1.8 degrees of camber to minus two degrees of camber, which leads us to believe, and the facts show, the data shows that it's the camber that must be the culprit for this inside tire wear. So what we're gonna do on this vehicle is we're gonna install these camber shims. This is kind of your more affordable you know, option to correct for camber, the toe's adjustable, plenty adjustable from the factory on these P2s, so that's not gonna be a problem. We don't need to get any toe arms. Uh, we got some extended bolts here to compensate for the thickness of this shim. We're gonna get these on the car. We're gonna correct the vehicle's uh, alignment values, and then we'll show you what the result is for that rear camber. Let's go. All right, guys, so alignment's done. Check it out. Here's what we got. With the shims, we got it down to 1.1 degrees of camber. So if you recall, in low, he was at about two degrees, 1.9 to two degrees. So we almost pulled out a whole degree of camber with this shim setup. Uh, so I think we got about 0.9 degrees. Uh, we fixed his rear toe. 
We fixed this front toe, so check this out. Put some work into that. We fixed his caster. He's got some more toe-in up in the front now, so that's good. And he is in the low setting, and that's where he's going to keep it now. He's not going to have the auto-adjusting height feature anymore. We took it even one step further, and we left the driver in the car. So I aligned this thing with driver weight just for fun. So that's all done. The other thing that this uh, gentleman did is he actually changed his wheels to a square setup. So he had 21-inch arachnids, something you'd similar you know, something that you'd see on like a plaid as well. And now he's gone to a 19, nine and a half square setup with the Hankook Ion Evo all season, 255, 45, 20 tire. So it's an all season tire, allows him to rotate. So his tire should last a lot longer. We see the biggest problems on vehicles with staggered setups. Uh, those rear tires just tend to separate and cord a lot, especially on the Pilot 4S's. So this thing is done. I'm gonna drop this down, get the targets off of it and show you his new wheels. Let's go. All right guys, car's all done. Here's a big reveal. He got the T-Sportline TSR wheel. This is a 19, nine and a half. And he did opt to go with the narrower tire size of 255 as opposed to a 285. Uh, he wanted to retain as much efficiency as he possibly could. So we did go with this size. Uh, this is the Tesla specific Hankook Ion Evo all season tire. It has a foam in it. It's supposed to be very efficient. And it is our tire of choice currently right now. So let's recap on the alignment and show you guys exactly what happened. So before, as you can see in the low setting, he was at toe out in the front, toe in the rear. He had two degrees of negative camber. We installed the camber shims, corrected his toe, so now he's toed in in the front, toed in in the rear, and 1.1 degrees of negative camber in the back. So we were able to pull out almost a whole degree of camber. That's gonna help protect the inside of his tire right here, make those tires last a lot longer, and he can now rotate his tires every 5,000 miles. This is a really, really affordable setup. If you guys are tired of burning through your tires with uneven tire wear, this is basically the ultimate setup you can go with. You can go with a 19 inch square setup or even a 20 inch square setup, which we've done in the past as well. But thanks again, guys. We're gonna share links to all these products in the description below. We appreciate all of your support. If you have any questions, just reach out to us. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share and check out our Patreon account at patreon.com forward slash Zebcentric. It's five bucks a month. We only have one membership available and it just shows us a little bit of your gratitude for all that we do for you. So we'll see you on the next one.